Is anything around here want to get scanned, please? How about those bananas? Those look like very suspicious, ghostly, spectral bananas. And I've only found it. Good morning, everyone. Dave from the Wee Hours here today, taking a look at Hellsign in early access as of today. So I'm just kind of getting my feet wet with this game and test driving it a little bit. I've put about 30 or so odd minutes into it and gone through a couple of the tutorial areas. And I thought we'd go back and look at the starting area, look at the tutorial area and see what you think of Hellsign. Sort of hardcore Ghostbusters, basically. We're hunting ghosts, but we're also shooting them a lot with lots and lots of guns. As we can see from our character here, he's got a flashlight and a gun and some sort of headset, and that's all he needs to combat the spectral realm. A bit of a warning in advance as I was going through this. There's going to be a lot of written dialogue on the screen. If you are reading that written dialogue, be prepared for some very strong language. Much stronger than one might normally expect on my channel, but that's the game we've got to work with. So I'll be working around it verbally as best. I can, but if you're reading the dialogue, do be prepared. There is some extremely strong language in this. So um, if you're easily offended by certain curse words, this may not be the right video for you, but we'll try and work around it as best we can. Let's get a new game started of Hellsign and see what we can do with this. So we've got our basic character here and we need to enter a name. Now my little tutorial exploration, I named myself Dave, so Probably won't be able to do that again. How about Dave 2.0? There we go. Will you let me do numbers? Apparently you can. And we have certain classes we can do, and all those are going to have little specialties or detriments or whatnot. So we could be an archaeologist. That's going to get us treasure hunting, artifact creating, and a starting schematic. That is quite good. A breacher, basically a kick the door open and shoot things. I'd be able to use heavy armor and have a health increase. There's going to be not a small amount of combat. Detective, however, sounds really good. Deduction and investigation using high-tech gadgets. Again, we are basically high-tech shooty ghostbusters, so we do need to investigate these areas too. It could be a drifter, which are only specialties that we can play the guitar. I don't know if that's a game mechanic that's going to be vitally important and I should absolutely pick Drifter, but I, I don't think that's the most vital thing I need in a ghost busting scenario. Field Medic, pretty self-explanatory use of med kits and a little bit of extra health. Stalker. Now, baits, grenade, grenades, and traps. You've got kind of a hunter character going on here. I do like the idea of grenades and traps, but... I don't, I'm not 100% feeling it. Mercenary, again, pretty self-explanatory. Efficient with sidearms. Now, you're going to get an upgraded gun right away. You're going to get a grease gun, whereas most of the characters are just going to get a small handgun. Ninja, dodging and assassination equipment. You get special shoes. You get a getta, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly to ninja experts around the world. An unusual choice. These old-fashioned sandals keep your mind on its toes. So we've got dodge window and dodge speed increased. Very nice. And Renegade with a specialty in gambling. Much like the guitar specialty, I'm not sure how often that's going to come up, but it is a it is an actual skill. Sleight of hand is a skill. So when gambling, whenever you lose, you get a 25% chance to sleight of hand some cash from the opponent and increases our upper betting limit. So Apparently, we're going to be doing quite a bit of gambling in this game. And back to archaeologists. I like the sound of detective. I don't, I mean, there's going to be some shooting, but I'd like to kind of go into this with more of a Call of Cthulhu, H.P. Lovecraft investigatory idea behind this. So I'm going to go with de detective. We'll confirm that character and get started with Hellsign. So after a brief cutscene where it is determined that we might possibly be a drug addict and we have a very weird tattoo that we know nothing about, um, we have been dispatched to our very first job because apparently we had nothing better to do with our lives. Pretty simple WASD to move, obviously, and then we can shift and I basically have to have to sprint just to complete the tutorial and yes again very very strong language on the dialogue i i don't know i have no ability to change that unfortunately but this is the guy we're supposed to meet outside this spooky house and our only line of sight is with this flashlight here so what have you got to say are you the scout we spoke to uh sure i i it's my only option so yes you see this automatic rifle on my back? I've had a hell of a week and I ain't here to waste time, even lost my cat. 
All right. Well, yes, I am the spoke the scout you spoke to because that's what's going to get this rocking and rolling here. So, yep. You know what you got to do? No, I have no idea what I got to do. I just woke up. I have a tattoo. I might be a drug addict. Uh no, not a clue. All right. To give you a rundown, we had some abnormal EMF readings in the neighborhood, and we believe poltergeists are involved. But don't worry about it. That's our job. So what do you need me to do? Like we spoke about over the phone, we need you to scout out the house for any paranormal signs and activity. And when you're done, head back over here with any signs so we can figure out what we're up against. Okay, fair enough. So we got to go back to the van to get our stuff. Come on, go to, go to the van. Van is sort of like our mobile base as I understand it and we only have the one thing the EZ carry EMF meter available at fine stores everywhere we can plop that into our inventory here get out of that and get into the house so where are there's the stairs right there okay we can just open the door and equip our EMF meter all right now now we kind of have to just sort of scan things. And as we move around, like right here, our EMF meter starts going nuts. We can watch it down in the corner, or from an audio perspective, it tells us something's going ballistic over here. Not, not so much here, so it's more over here. Is it the painting? No. How about this painting? No. Okay. Bunch of dead bodies. We should probably be concerned about that. That's probably a thing that, you know, we should address at some point. But after we look for clues... Oh, oh, there's a little little break in the world there. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. More over here. Here. No. No, it was back this way. There we go. Yeah, the, the meter's definitely going nuts somewhere around here. Like right here... There we go. How about here? Yep. Okay, so we found some evidence. We found a doll. All right. Fair enough. Now we got to locate a corpse with a blood trail. Well, very handily, there's one right in front of us. That was easy. Now we need to use our black light to follow the trail. When it says follow the trail, I found it generally means just sort of swipe it around the corpse. Because that should... Yep, there we go. We, we found things. We're definitely finding things. Not that thing, though. There is actual a reasonable degree of trying to figure things out in this game. Now, did I see another corpse over here? No. Is it just... Let me go back to this just so I can see things better. There's one corpse. Definitely a blood trail. All right, let's try the black light again. That is not pulling anything up on this corpse. So maybe there's another corpse that we need to look for. Again, I did go through this tutorial area, but I did it kind of quickly and at speed, and I don't remember all of it. No dead people over here. Oh, there's a dead person. Let's go scan him. All right, so if we scan you, do we get anything out of you? No. No, we don't. All right. Kind of putter along here a little bit. Well, I've made it all the way over to the kitchen without finding anything yet, and despite the fact that I just played this part of the game not more than an hour ago, I'm actually kind of stumped. Is it the fridge? I remember the fridge being important. Nope, not the fridge. How about the lamp? Is anything around here want to get scanned, please? How about those bananas? Those look like very suspicious, ghostly, spectral bananas. And I've only found the two corpses, right? There's one corpse there. And one corpse over in the other room. Oh, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. I just got a little buzzy thing there. Like the world just broke into shattered spectral shards. No? Okay, was hoping for the best there. Aha! Found it. It was strangely over in this top old bookcase. But yes, we found the other clue there, so... Back to the EMF detector. Yeah, it was over in this toppled bookcase. I don't actually recall it being there. I, I don't know if the clues are randomized. They very well may be, which would add for a lot of replayability. So we're back to the EMF meter, and we have to find another hot spot, if you will. 
anything over here. Yeah, if the clues are randomized in different locations, that would add quite a bit of replayability to this game. If I don't necessarily automatically know where everything is going to be. Potted plant, free of ghostly influence. All right, moving on. Moving on. How about this bookcase over here? Getting hotter, getting warmer. How about this broken table? No, not so much on the broken table. All right, I do recall the fridge being important. I'm going to go back to the fridge. Anything over here? Nope, fridge is not important this time. Okay, maybe it is randomized. Neat. Well, we just have to keep going around and doing hot, cold, hot, cold until we find the thing. Oh, th oh this is getting good. Is it the TV? If watching the movie Poltergeist has taught me anything, the TV is suspicious. No, not the TV. All right. Oh, there we go. There we go. Found it. Found it. Yep. 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 We found some rope. We found some rope. And I definitely did not find that particular piece of evidence, i.e. a piece of rope, the last time. So that is interesting. That does its uh, degree of randomization on the clues. Back to the black light. Let's search the obvious corpse right in front of us. That just seems to make sense. Nope, nothing there. Are we going to have to go around to, as I did the first time, every single interactable object with the black light? Because I'll tell you, Hellsign, that, that is a little fussy. I like the EMF one because you can do hot, cold, hot, cold, but I don't have that with the black light. I'm just going around and touching everything in the house until I find a thing. Aha! It was the stove. Isn't it always the stove? Yeah, that's completely randomized, which is interesting. I, I, this is, all of those clues and all of those locations were not what I, what or where I found things in my first time playing this. So there's, there's a degree of replayability to it. And we're done. Basically, we're done. So we can take the signs back to the guy. We can put away our EMF detector and take the signs back to Banjo. Oh, he of the really foul mouth. Oh, it's pouring out. Banjo, do you want to maybe do this inside? You, you're just standing out here in the rain, man. All right, Banjo, I found all your things. I don't care what signs you found. Just hurry up and decipher them. Okay, will do. On it. Uh, but what's a cryptonomicon? Your cryptonomicon, I'm talking about that massive encyclopedia detailing cryptids and paranormal phenomena that every scout lives and breathes by. So, all right, good. We can open up our little book here and start dragging some clues around. This kind of reminds me of a Phantom Doctrine kind of thing where we're just going to drag things into a little clue box and try to do things. So, we don't know what it is yet. Now we've got to figure out its identity. And that one wants to go over here. Okay. So, we're, we know it's some sort of poltergeist, but we don't really know what kind of poltergeist yet. Let's, uh, oh, I don't know, let's go to poltergeist. That seems sensible. How about, we've got conflict, clash, encounter, struggle, battle. Hmm, what do I do with that information? So, if we go to all of our little tabs here, we've basically got a find the word search way of solving clues. So, blood, we have clues like blunt force, sharp force, clean slice. Now, those don't match up with any of the clues that we got from here. So, how about symbols? Anything there? Paganic, esoteric, occultic? Nope, those don't match up either. Structural, ah, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so we've got struggle. That matches, and that's going to analyze something. That's going to reveal a shadow. Okay, is that... Is that the thing that we're looking for, or do we need to learn something else? How about uh, battle? That is also on here. Nightmare. All right, it could be a nightmare. That's also something it might be. Conflict. Banshee. Okay, apparently it was a banshee. You're sure it's a banshee, right? I'm not super sure. Um, I just clicked on things, Banjo, until you said it was a banshee. All right, it didn't end well. Uh, I'm never wrong. It's my best guess. You know what? That is the most honest answer I can give you, Banjo. It's my best guess. You don't sound too confident. I'm not. I'm, I'm a level zero armed ghostbuster dude. 
So we got to finish up this job before we can go, but you can leave. Where's my pay? Yeah, let's get to the important part of the equation here. Where's my money? Got our hands full here, so I'll tell you what. Head back to town and find the shaggy jackal down on Valley Road. Okay, can do. So now we can go back to the van. Again, our sort of mobile base slash load screen, and I believe we can just leave. Yep, the little skeletal hand is telling me to leave the job. And there's our mission report, where we can see circled in red, we have earned exactly zero dollars. No dollars. The amount of money we have earned is a big, fat, whopping zero. It was only worth 15 to begin with. But uh, there it is, there it is. I suppose we've got to go back to the bar and, and find the guy, find Banjo, and get paid for this. And we go to a city screen where our only option is to go to the bar. Sounds like pretty much every city I've ever lived in. Head to the bar and find Banjo. And all some of these people are clickable on. Now, I happen to know that Banjo is right here. But we'll come back to some of these other people down the road. You're joking. Where's my money? Where's my $15? Calm down. I'll sort you out. Don't worry about that. See that shady guy in the corner with the black hoodie and the shades? That's Redback. Those signs you found, well, you can get some serious cash selling them to him. Is he a merchant? A fixer, more like. All right. Now you, I believe, yeah, you're a fixer. You don't look like you're from around here. I was told you buy signs for cash. Shows sign under jacket, so we're going to be a little stealthy and surreptitious about this. Or I'm looking to sell some signs just blatantly. Let's uh, let's try to pretend we know what we're doing here. You a cop who sent you reaches for a gun. Just relax. I'm just looking to make some extra cash. Um, how do you know about me? The guy literally five feet away from you told me about you. You were right there. I uh, haven't played card with that guy in ages. How much did he tell you? Says you cheated him out of five grand and a cat can we get to the part please fixer where you're selling me things or i'm selling you things you only deal in cash that's fine i have no cash i'm owed 15 dollars, but i don't have it yet yep let's trade all right so we can get from him entries so we could learn things in our cryptonomicon we could get a blood crawler entry for five dollars and i'm going to assume learn what a blood crawler is and probably how we deal with it like the thing that we learned about the banshee learn what its strengths and weaknesses are ghoul now what are shadow pages pages detailing properties and weakness of this powerful pot poltergeist oh so a shadow not shadow pages like dark pages of a book Private eye patch for $1,000. What does that do? Will likely make it hard to see. Okay. So we'd gain 25 XP, but we'd lose 50% accuracy when shooting things. That doesn't seem very sensible. Let's just sell our stuff. Because this comes up as useless. It has no value. We can sell it for $3. So sure, you can have a doll and some useless rope and a useless amulet and a useless structural thing. Good. Do that. And I got, I got my $15. Yay. I'm going to buy the blood crawler entry, though. Yeah, I want to buy that. Good. May as well get something for our trouble. Head back to our safe house. Let's leave the bar. And now our only other option is the safe house. Let's head in there. And we've got stuff. So we can go back to our cryptonomicon. And, well, we have info about poltergeist. What about critters? Bloodcrawler, Spiderling. Okay, Spiderling, we, we usually call those spiders. A common Australian rodent. Um, spiders aren't rodents. Grows up to a meter in size before reaching maturity phase. Mostly harmless. I think a meter long spider in Australia is just a spider. I think those that's a regular everyday household spider. Okay, so let's look at our skills. Of which we have none. We have zero skill points. We're terrible at ghost busting right now, but there's a lot we can learn. So in investigation, basic gadgets, okay, and that'll lead down to audio file, allows utilizing signs to gain a large advantage against the specific deducted enemy. So if we were looking for a very specific enemy, this would help. That's good. Probably doesn't help if we don't know what we're looking for, though. How about parazoology? Deducting the identity of cryptids, pathology, 
deducting poltergeist subtrait level two. I don't know what subtrait level two means, but deducting poltergeist, that's handy. And what about, oh, I don't know, guns. So handguns, self-explanatory, SMGs and sawed-offs. Now there we go. Good shotgun cures most ghost problems. How about survival? First aid, very self-explanatory. Heavy armor, all right. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to use that. I, I feel that was under, oh no, I was gonna say the breacher, but I think the breacher just comes with the heavy armor perk, but we could probably get it later. Paranormal peripherals allows the use of specialized protective gear against poltergeists. That sounds super handy. And subterfuge countermeasures allows the use of proximity tripwire countermeasures. So we can trap ghosts with tripwires? Hmm, we'll see about that. Ninjutsu, use of evasive footwear. And we kind of saw that when we were looking at the ninja character. And gambling. And not just a little bit of gambling. There's four separate perks to this. So sleight of hand, Irish luck, 5% accuracy increase with all guns. Oh, that's very handy. 2% crit chance with all guns, also very handy. And a 2% chance to evade incoming damage. Oh, that's really good stuff. Counterfeit, when selling signs, gives a 25% chance to sell a counterfeit and retain the original. Oh, interesting. All right. And nine lives. If you die, you gain a second life and five seconds of invulnerability. Oh, so you just pop back up. However, that's level 99 required. I'm level one. That's going to be a ways off. Okay, so we kind of see where the sleight of hand thing comes in. That just leads to really cool stuff down the road. Interesting. Okay. And then click on the crafting table, which is this guy right here. There's absolutely nothing we can do. I mean, we have nothing to craft, but, you know, in theory we could. Someday, maybe, if we have any schematics. All right, fair enough. Head back to the bar and find some work. And that's probably a good place to call it on Hell Sign 4 right now. Kind of just an idea of a first look video, but let me know what you think. Do you want to see more of Hell Sign? I know, having gone through this a little bit, the next tutorial mission is combat oriented, so we start shooting things in the next mission rather than just looking at things. But it's got a little interesting mix of detective and deductive reasoning and looking for clues and figuring out clues, and then a little bit of shooting things. So it's got something for everyone. To as hell sign but let me know what you think if you want to see more of hell sign let me know if you want to see less of hell sign let me know if you never want to see hell sign again let me know but until then i'm dave thank you as always for joining me in the wee hours and we'll see you next time i find it very funny that smashing through the window apparently does not arouse any suspicion at all and you're gonna smash the other window you couldn't even go in the same window colossus oh games are funny sometimes Games are a little silly sometimes.